Hi, we have talked about the drawing for the standing wave for quite a while. However, we still don't really understand the fundamental idea of how the standing wave was formed. And therefore, in this video, I want to address this. And ultimately, I hope you can answer the two questions on the screen here. And that's also inside your booklet. And that is including describing what it means by standing wave and the difference between a standing wave and traveling wave and also of course how the standing wave is formed. Here I find the best standing wave simulation very simplistic but easy for you to understand uh, for the standing wave. So I'll put the link in the description below and I'll also want you to explore it yourself and try to look at the pattern how the standing wave was formed simply and try to answer the two questions just now I showed to you. So pause the video now and try the simulation and answer the questions yourself. A few moments later. All right, so let's look at the animation again. Here is the incoming incident wave. And obviously we, when we set the reflection to be fixed end, the blue one at the bottom, you can see here, uh, will have a phase change of 180 degree, that is pi of phase change because of fixed end. For free end, you can also try that. Uh, there will be no fixed uh, phase change. However, you still can form descending wave. Okay, and then now you start to realize seeing here is the anti-node. Okay, because simply the incoming wave, which is the black one uh, or the, the red one here, or right, going to the right, will be having a wave like that and also the reflected one the blue one will be kind of the same shape so that is why you have that standing wave first part uh, appear and when the wave goes by you can see that um, coincidentally at this so-called so node the amplitude are always cancel out from the red and the blue same as here I mean for the end is always true because you always have a phase difference immediately of 180 degree which is half of your cycle and therefore they are always opposite so if you uh, if I have to call the displacement then uh, say this one is positive 10 this is negative 10 and as time goes by this is now positive 15 negative 15 but no matter what number it is the total sum is always zero And so now you can see more anti-node and node there. And the reason why they are node and anti-node in fact is something to do with constructive and destructive interference and the path difference you learned earlier. I will talk about that by the end of this video, but let's try to finish one of the questions on how descending wave is formed first. Okay, so let's write down some notes for question 33 first. So how the sending wave is formed, uh, according to the simulation just now, is that the incident wave, wave I should say, uh, is reflected at the other end. And then when two waves more precisely, when two identical waves um, meet, they would superpose and form the standing wave. That's why we introduced the idea of superposition to you earlier in this chapter and also the idea of reflection having a phase change or not because that will affect the pattern of the standing wave. However, there are two things that I would like to emphasize and I would need your attention. The first thing is the two waves have to be identical because uh, they would need to have the same amplitude and also the frequency or wavelength as well. Think about this, if there are two waves that are not even the same shape, 
even though when they miss they will have superposition you will not have such a nice formation of the sum as the standing wave uh, it you won't you will never have a note that is literally not moving and this is all thanks to the fact that they are just mathematically matched the path difference is exactly zero for the two wave the second thing is uh, it may not necessarily to be a reflected uh, you could still have although it's very hard to to produce in theory is it still possible that you have a wave going in one direction and another wave going in another direction and when they meet uh, and if it is a continuous wave uh, you can still form sending waves so it's not necessarily to be reflection although in most of the cases uh, it, it will involve reflection also okay so for the other question uh, we can talk about what it mean by sending wave first okay and like we said it's a formation of a wave from two waves by superposition like what we just mentioned and mo most importantly uh, appear to be not moving or stationary simply and now I would like to challenge you to think of the differences between the standing wave and traveling wave uh, for me at least I can think of three different features that they are different so pause the video and try it yourself all right so here are the three answers that I can think of and if you have more ideas please put down in the comment section below for the first one which should be the easiest one and that is standing wave does not transfer energy because they are not moving right and if you think about the traveling wave uh, for example the water wave actually you are transferring the kinetic energy from one place to another difference number two that is the amplitude is not going to be constant throughout the whole standing wave and that is to say for traveling wave it is a constant of course and if you don't understand you can refer back to this animation so uh, when we have the resultant sending wave you can see at the anti node the amplitude which is the maximum displacement you have is going to be the largest while for node uh, it literally has zero displacement even for all time and that means that is the amplitude amplitude is literally zero and for the point between them they all have a continuous change of amplitude throughout the whole distance while for traveling wave they all will have the same amplitude because the wave is literally traveling so for all the particles sooner or later they will hit the crest and the trough for the same displacement the third difference this one is pretty hard to observe we can see that the particles between two nodes will always be in phase in the standing wave and that is to say if you look at the animation again uh, for example between this one all right on my cursor they are always going now going up and come back down and so all these particles between these two nodes are always in phase okay and if you try to compare with the next region that means the particles next to you uh, between also between the nodes uh, then these two regions will always be out of phase so for example uh, this one and the one next to it now one is up one is down and now you can see it flips again so you can see they are always our face so this is uh, so different in the traveling wave for traveling wave you can recall the animation in your mind uh, each of them will be hitting the the crest and trough and you know moving along and therefore the particles that are in phase will only if they are literally one lambda apart okay and that means within one wave cycle uh, all of them will have zero to two pi of phase difference for example this one 
at the top, this one at the bottom will have uh, one pi of phase difference, or this one and this one will have pi over two, that is 90 degrees of phase difference, etc. So the change, the phase change is going to be um, changing all the time uh, throughout the whole cycle. That's all for this video. I hope now you understand how the standing wave is formed and also the difference between standing wave and traveling waves. If you find this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.